with the panel discussion on a very important matter. The discussion is titled Developing Cultural Centers Together Lithuania, Ukraine. Hopefully uh, this discussion will provide a platform for institutional actors to discuss about the sphere of culture, about the possibilities of sustainable relations, not only now, but also in the afterwar period. Um, and it is important to mention that today we are going to speak uh, with the representatives from very different cultural organizations, from both from Lithuania and from Ukraine. So now I would like to shortly introduce today's speakers who are both here in the Lithuanian Composers Union and as well online. Um, Mrs. Galina Grigorenko, Deputy Minister of Culture and Information Policy of Ukraine. Good evening, uh, Mrs. Grigorenko. Hopefully she hears us. Uh, Daina Urbanavicene, Deputy Minister of Culture of Lithuania. Good evening, Daina. Good evening. Ala Zagitkevich, composer and founder of EMDG. Uh, good evening, good evening. Ala. Ostap Manuliak, PhD, composer, co-founder of the Vox Electronica and the Dramatica Festivals. Good evening, Ostap. He's in shelter. He's in shelter. Oh, in shelter. <laughs> We'll join us a little oh, okay. bit later. Okay, okay. Hopefully, we will mm -hmm. hear uh, Ostap's voice a little bit later. Uh, Marta Finkelstein, pianist, curator at Synesthesis Contemporary Music Ensemble. Hello, Marta. Hello, good evening. Nikolas Natalavichus, composer, chairman of Lithuanian Composers Union. Good evening, Nikolas. Hello, good evening. Katerina Alimova, cultural manager, artistic director of Yuna Musica Festival. Good evening, Katerina. Good evening. <laughs> Mantutas Krukauskas, composer and sound artist, associate professor at the Lithuanian Academy of Music and Theatre, head of the Music Innovation Studies Center. Good evening, Mantutas. Hello, good evening. And Albert Saprikin, composer, co founder, head of Kiev Contemporary Music Days. Hello, Albert. Hello, And today I, Rasama Ruskaya Kriushkene, will be moderating that discussion. So, to begin with, uh, I would like to ask all of you to share uh, your experience about the change after this uh, very harsh day, after 24 February, how both internally and in terms of cooperation, actually, dynamics between Lithuania and Ukraine cultural sectors changed. Um, I would like to ask to comment all of you, so maybe we can start uh, I don't know, maybe Ala. Uh, thank you for this question. And uh, I think the best uh, best solution to to make something uh, stable in our culture uh, relation, it's uh, uh, real uh, activity of personal activity of artists. And uh, I think it's the first uh, first line, first step. To, to think about uh, institutions uh, support uh, or institution relations, but firstly, we need to uh, to uh, to have some artistic uh, artistic experience, ex ex artistic basics, uh, personal personal basic base, and uh, I, I want uh, absolutely uh, uh, to talk uh, absolutely clear that. Uh, support of Lithuanian artists is uh, like the first, 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 first place uh, for me personally, I think for uh, electroacoustic uh, uh, act, uh, active community in Ukraine. So for, uh, the first step for us, it was like things about uh, m make archive, make uh, accumulation of our energy, uh, accumulation of our experience, and uh, 
Second, uh, second step is uh, uh, things to, to continue some artistic, uh, artistic, uh, artistic activity. And uh, uh, it was uh, very important for us to have uh, this possibility to, from uh, invitation from a lot, a lot of uh, our friends. Uh, for, uh, I think it's the it's it's very philosophical uh, aspect to make music uh, during the war or not make music and make uh, art not make but uh, so i uh, i think the first first uh, idea it's not institutional uh, um, uh, organization it's not vertical organization but it's mostly horizontal uh, organization of our activity Katarina, I would like to ask you, as you are a very uh, good example of what actually changed you came here to Lithuania uh, and now working here, so please. Yes, uh, it, it's true, and first of all, I would like to say thank you to Mikolas, who invited me, uh, and uh, to, to be a part of the great festival Yuna Musica. And, you know, for one side, we, uh, we definitely ha uh, have uh, uh, great changes in work in, in at first in countries and for all peoples and in organization. Uh, and it's difficult when you have these changes to be, you know, in the middle of these changes, in the center of, in epicenter of this uh, of, of these changes. Uh, however, it's really important to make this step back. Uh, I think that mm, I can do that after after the festival. But for now, what I can see and what I can crystallize uh, during my work for these five months, uh, there is three main uh, topics uh, that change rapidly during this time. So, first one uh, is building uh, bridges, building communication uh, among uh, cultural. Uh, institution and it's obvious that you cannot go alone <laughs> it took a lot of time uh, and in this terrible time to find uh, partners who support your idea who support your vision is the main thing that we trying to do and <laughs> need to do after after all uh, the second thing is experience i think uh, now uh, I had a great example to, to learn how to work in international experience and to bring my experience as well uh, to uh, international festival. Uh, so we do not need to, you know, to, um, to think that our experience is not enough or compare. We have what we have for our previous years and I talk not like for me as a person, I'm talking as for whole culture field. So. We have what we have, we can deal with that, and we can continue working with uh, other uh, actors and understand how we can be helpful to each other. And the third one, uh, I think that uh, uh, we need to build uh, actually uh, cooperation in, inside, uh, I may be a little bit contradict to Ala, because I think that we need uh, to build cooperation in the inner organization in organizational level. Uh, since I must say that we now we have a big chance and big interest to Ukraine, to Ukraine culture. Unfortunately, uh, this interest uh, goes with a horrible war. Uh, but I know that this interest will not be f for long. Uh, and I understand that what can keep this, it's a cooperation uh, between institutions building plans. I know how difficult it is, but trying to build plans and to look at the future and try to, to do a joint pro project together. Now I would like to uh, ask uh, two speakers who are online. O Ostap, if he is with us. Ostap, are you with us? Uh, yes. No. Oh, yes, yes. hello. Hello. Hello, what's up? Uh, nice to hear your voice. Uh, uh, so nice, to, nice to see you. Uh, sorry, sorry that I'm late. We have an attack alarm, and uh, because of that, I should switch from, from the studio to nearby cafe. So sorry for the noise in the background. 
don't be sorry definitely and uh, it's like a good example of the situation we have uh, Ostap, so maybe I repeat the question. Uh, I have been asking all of the speakers today about how actually they can uh, name the changes between the Lithuanian and Ukrainian uh, cultural sector, the dynamics of the change of the cooperation after the 24th of the February. Have you noticed it? Have you seen maybe a strengthened relation between these uh, two countries in the cultural space? Uh, sorry, are you asking uh, me about uh, about this question? Oh, he, may, maybe Ostap is not hearing very well. Albert, so maybe I can uh, give this question to you. Sure, sure. Um, greetings from Kyiv. Um, yeah, first of all, I would like to thank the Lithuanian Composers Union and the team of the Yauna Musica Festival for being open to our idea of organizing this public talk and for making it happen. Also, Rasta, thank you many times for moderating us today. We are genuinely happy to work with you for the second time already. And uh, thanks to all the speakers that are joining us today. Um, as for Cave Contemporary Music Days, well, um, in terms of changes, um, throughout 2015-2021, we functioned as an educational and concert platform for contemporary music. Uh, things we did are festivals, concerts, uh, video concerts, masterclasses, lectures, you name it. Immediately after Russia's large-scale invasion started, we realized that there is a need to streamline our activities into two groups. And the uh, first line of the activities is preserving the Ukrainian musical community, since, you know, music is people, and people have become endangered. To this end, we've started a foundation to support the Ukrainian classical music community. We have been supported in one or another way by a significant number of musicians and organizations from all over the world, Lithuania, Germany, USA, Italy, UK, many others. This helped us to gather the funds that later we distributed amongst the fund applicants. And f as for the second line of our activities, um, that would be presenting Ukrainian culture and contemporary music, uh, Ukrainian musicians internationally, both through the means of concerts and, and festivals, but also through conferences, discussions, articles in the media, public talks, such as the one we're having right now. Um, and as for, as for what we've been, you know, witnessing during these six months, uh, it seems like ironically the full-scale war unleashed by Russia in Ukraine provoked an unprecedented mobilization and cohesion of cultural actors in Ukraine and other European countries, amongst which Lithuania is a prime example. And, um, and uh, you know, sociology says that the, at the moment of crisis, the natural development of trends in communities accelerates and the tendencies, they become more observable and the processes that seemed to take years or decades, they develop within months. And this statement, I might say that it's, you know, also valid in the context of relation between the communities of our two countries. And we've seen numerous examples to support this statement. Um, Lithuania and Ukraine, we share the same pain. Both countries have been under Russia's regime that was focusing, among other things, on extermination of our cultural identities. Therefore, it feels like that is the, that is the reason that there is no need for us to talk much about the context of moscow kiev rela relations, for example. And here at Kiev Contemporary Music Days, we feel that, um, you know, Ukrainian actors in the field of culture, for, for us, it is important at this point to make the Ukrainian culture as visible as possible from one hand, both in concert halls or within exhibitions, etc. But also from other hand, through the optics of shedding some light on, you know, its history. As you well know, the major aspect of Ukrainian culture's history is being repressed by Russia as a colonizer, not only Ukraine though, for several centuries, Ukrainian, but also Lithuanian, Estonian, Latvian, Georgian, Moldovian, Belarusian, Kazakh, 
you name it. Cultures have been living in the shadow of Russian culture. Moscow had a monopoly on high cosmopolitan culture, while the periphery, including our two countries, was only allowed to produce second-rate provincial ethnographic art. The problem we see here in KCMD is that this narrative has been planted by Russia in the minds of the Western part of Europe quite wisely and craftily. And we believe that it is important for our countries to join our forces to break the Moscow narrative once and for all. Therefore, while programming our future activities in Berlin, for instance, but also in Kyiv, we plan to include the music by not only Ukrainian composers, but also by composers from Lithuania, Kazakhstan, Moldova, Poland, and all other countries that have been shared, that have shared uh, the mutual historic pain. Uh, we can't only talk about the history, though, and we can't focus only on our countries. We believe that on the international cultural scene, we should gain agency by creating projects, outcome of which is public good that is beneficial to artists, not necessarily of Ukrainian origin. To give you an example of what I mean, while organizing the masterclasses in Kyiv for several times, also in Lisbon, we were making them uh, sometimes free to join by composers not only from Ukraine, but from all over the world. We were supporting them and making them join the masterclasses. Thus, we did something that is valuable and brings Ukraine on the map, not only as the country that needs support, but also as a country that uh, has something to bring to the table uh, to the international music community. To summarize, uh, Firstly, we realized that we should focus on preserving Ukrainian music through helping actual people, musicians that are in need, um, musicians that have lost their homes, their instruments, sometimes their jobs. We feel that it's important for us as an NGO to support them so that they can go on practicing as musicians and maintain their careers. Secondly, we feel like it's important to proactively work with the international community and present Ukrainian contemporary music and, among other things, use it as an instrument of cultural diplomacy that helps to shed some light on Ukrainian, but also other countries that share our country's historical pain cultures. And thirdly, um, um, Kiev Contemporary Music Today's team feels like there is a need for the Ukrainian actors to find ways to gain agency through bringing to the table public goods that is beneficial to the broad international community, not only the one we represent. Thank you, Albert. And now I would like to uh, go back to Marta and Nicholas, uh, representatives of two Lithuanian organizations, Lithuanian Composers Union and Ensemble Synesthesis. So still keeping uh, the question about the change you actually noted uh, during last six, more than six months after the war. Uh, started, uh, how could you that describe that change between the ab about the relation between Lithuanian and Ukrainian uh, cultural scenes? So I think the first thing, uh, the, the situation was very extreme and we had no procedures if to talk about the process, what has happened, because uh, if talking in general what has happened uh, during that time period from the beginning of war, I think the main thing was that um, the necessity to cooperate with Ukrainian artists from possibility uh, became some sort of urgency and uh, necessity to, to do that because uh, the partnerships, well, we had some connections before with Ukraine actually through uh, International Society for Contemporary Music, but actually when everything uh, started, we had lots of small things, small talks with uh, Ukrainian Composers Union, uh, some strange things happening in uh, Contemporary so Society of Con for Contemporary Music. Uh, uh, our Lithuanian section has uh, uh, sent the letter for us requesting to uh, stop the uh, participation of Russian section in that society and we also had some uh, s situations with uh, very complicated po political situation because some countries, not, not all countries, look at that situation 
unfortunately, as we look. And actually, afterwards, uh, there was a very interesting process, uh, especially with younger ensembles, also with synesthesis, and uh, that that process, how Katarina has came, it was uh, very cooperative, actually, and it, there was a lot of uh, calls and uh, emotions connected with what to do, actually, because, well, uh, it's not situation what we deal with each day actually and it's very very strange how to help for, for them so I would say that in, if to talk in general I think the first thing well, the main thing what we can uh, summarize is that uh, cooperation with Ukraine now is uh, the topic of cooperation uh, as with uh, other neighboring countries, for example, Nordic countries or Baltic countries or Poland and so on. So, and uh, if that Ukraine looked a bit far before, now it is looking much more closer, and it is very important, I think, uh, from our organization side. And actually, if to talk about uh, the, I can also mention some some things also about that festival because. Uh, when we started to think what we can do more, there was also a question about how to include some activities in our in our events. And actually festivals was mostly open things where we could put something inside. And actually, uh, fortunately, we were looking for curator of Yona Musica Festival and actually Katerina has came as a solution for <laughs> us and and uh, we are very happy that it happened <coughs> so. Uh, but if to talk of the main change, I think that it, it was the main change that uh, some somehow things uh, in deep inside Ukraine become very important as a partner, as yes. a foreign car partner and uh, uh, I think it's a very good place to showcase that music, uh, Ukrainian music and Lithuanian festival, uh, which always was uh, very versatile, very experimental and uh, also international and showing variety of, of music, of possibilities, how, s how artists can work with sound. So I think it's a very good place and I hope that uh, it's very important that uh, everything wouldn't stop just in that situation and we wouldn't for forget that because of course it's that uh, um, it's very practical and human thing that uh, we react to everything when it is fresh but when it starts to fade out we go to another things and uh, I, I, I hope so that we will keep that cooperation. I like the idea that Ukraine got a lot closer now. Actually, Mark, a few comments from your side. Uh, I know synesthesis actually maybe were the first that uh, kept the relation with Katerina and we had this discussion before. So what actually changed maybe in your programming? Maybe you included more uh, composers from Ukraine. Maybe uh, you started other cooperations in organizational level. Yeah, so uh, Mikolas already told the story about Katerina. <laughs> so it was... Uh, very much an organizational inside conversations and one of uh, Lithuanian person who works a lot, Jutta Pranulita, she had contacts and then she told us about Katerina and I remember I looked at her CV and I thought it's like me just in Ukraine. <laughs> <laughs> I thought we have to do something. And so uh, we worked a little bit in the beginning then she came uh, to Lithuania and then now there are a few projects that are already kind of I think that is already our way of our kind of working together so it's not theoretical but we already do it and already tomorrow the concert in the evening this is in programming the example that I'm very like looking forward and I think it's beautiful example of how we put Lithuanian and Ukrainian composers not only in programming as like a mix a salad or something like that but we suggested to to have a narrative that it's almost like a could be a conversation between uh, cultures in in these few composers, but it has such a big topic that I think it's beautiful segue to talk about broader things and exactly what Albert says. And actually, because we worked with Katerina and we started to talk about this program, another project is waiting for us that we're 
working with through synesthesis and Kiev contemporary music days for me was the biggest joy um, was to speak with Katerina most of all we talked quite a lot with her and after I met Albert it was the same thing that you understand what Mikolas mentioned some countries don't understand things the same way and it's really very interesting thing that you speak with uh, young people with the same age and with same experience as you and you understand you understand context completely the same and maybe this change for me as a person who programs things and uh, maybe huge self-criticism because because I didn't know any Ukrainian music before but now I think also what we spoke with uh, Katerina and Albert maybe for me it was also interesting revelation because all of us in Eastern Europe when we program when we think of things we always think how to impress the West countries and it's one of our first conversations what could we do such a strong thing that everybody would see but afterwards I understood that's completely yes it could be one of side effects if it's a wonderful things you do but maybe this is the thing that is more meaningful to speak with each other more and that's why for me this experience now is very personally um, I don't know quite changing because for me this is the thing I want to understand better that my region also beautiful things happening for example with Baltic music here uh, now this more work to talk about this mutual and I think little by little maybe we're growing out of this we have to impress someone but maybe we have to understand what we want to speak about and I think now this festival is a beautiful example of that and that we, we don't care if we include a lot of yet, we, I don't know, big countries, but it's more important about the... the more about us. About us and what we want to say. And I think it's such a subtle, subtle, uh, subtle kind of approach, but very meaningful one. Thank you, Marta. And uh, before I will give a word to both deputy ministers from Ukraine and from Lithuania, which uh, possibly has the broad overview of actually what has changed in the uh, cooperation of both countries, I would like to also give a word to Manto Taskrukauskas, who uh, represents also the Lithuanian Academy of Music and Theatre. Manto is a composer, but also the uh, associate professor at the Academy. And Manto maybe you can do a few comments on how actually uh, the dynamics between Lithuania and Ukraine and maybe Lithuanian and Ukrainian students changed in this academic level. Um, I don't know, maybe now Academy has more students from Ukraine, possibly it, it, it has. And maybe you also have a few comments on the artistic level, on the artistic cooperation, so. Yes, for sure. Uh, first of all, uh, hello everybody, nice to uh, see you all and I'll talk about this really uh, important uh, topics we are touching now. Uh, yes, we definitely had uh, experienced uh, like a closeness uh, with uh, Ukrainian uh, students, uh, some of them have been and are now studying in the academy as well as in some other higher education institutions in Lithuania uh, with uh, some support from uh, Lithuanian governments um, and sometimes some private funds. Of course, everybody tries to do everything what they can uh, because of uh, this kind of identity connection. I think it, it is very much uh, related to the sense of education and culture. Mm. Uh, I think there are many beautiful things uh, happening now, despite all the horrible things happening. Uh, one of uh, the moments, I would say, is the realization uh, that the culture as soft power can uh, really benefit uh, people when we are talking about cooperation, when we are talking about actually meeting people, uh, creating uh, middle grounds for people to meet and then beautiful things happen you know uh, of course as we also know like if culture is being used uh, in a power relationship mode <laughs> then it probably becomes propaganda and it's not the culture we're talking about we're talking about love for our culture and love for the culture of uh, neighboring countries of the people uh, in the region 
we always can find what connects us, not what divides us. And we are not saying that one or another culture is better, but we're learning from each other. We're learning all life. We're learning from our life. Uh, we're learning from the experiences of others. And we learn also to be more empathic. And I think especially when we are talking about culture and the arts, it is extremely necessary for us to build that empathy, to build the understanding, uh, to build ability for critical thinking and other stuff to make sure in the end that's uh, maybe uh, as much as possible, <laughs> no, no more horrible things like this happen in the future. So maybe I touch the education on kind of more philosophical or global sense but i think this is very important and I, I think this is what i felt of course for us it's easier to identify with this situation as also albert and Ostap and others mentioned about having the same same kind of uh, say experience <laughs> but uh, nevertheless uh, we also have to think about future we have to think about other countries and we have to think what nice can we do to ensure the rebuilding also and doing beautiful things when hopefully the war will end as soon as possible. Daina, I would like to ask uh, now you as a deputy minister of culture, uh, of course many initiatives uh, have shown during this period of time, uh, many new things were started, but how could you uh, describe, maybe maybe see, give us this overview or from the perspective of the main institution of culture in Lithuania, how actually that dynamic of cooperation between Lithuania and Ukraine changed during last months yes there are a lot of changes I, I can see and uh, of, of course uh, the first first thing that uh, this war I think that uh, father strengthened it uh, our very good relations with Ukraine and uh, Lithuania our culture ministry uh, took several approaches to to assist uh, Ukraine in this difficult time and uh, we always standing on the Ukrainian side and speak for the Ukraine in the European Union, in the other European formats. Uh, we want to, to extract uh, all Russians initiatives and with uh, Russian invasion of Ukraine, Lithuania, also uh, together with Latvia, Poland and Estonia, we immediately blocked uh, Russian and Belarusian uh, war propaganda TV channels and uh, when the war broke uh, out in Ukraine our culture minister uh, invited uh, Lithuanian culture and cultural institution institutions immediately uh, immediately responded uh, to this change situation what uh, cultural institu institutions uh, made they established and continue to establish partnerships with Ukrainian artists and cultural workers, accommodating them, employing, employing them and involving them in joint projects. And we also are giving people not only a safe haven, but also the opportunity to keep their creative skills alive. And for this purpose, our culture ministry introduced such support measures as individual grants for Ukrainian artists and cultural professionals, by Lithuanian Council for Culture and Lithuanian Film Center. Also, Lithuanian Council for Culture provides projects-based uh, funding for to Lithuanian culture and arts organizations implementing support, especially for Ukraine initiatives or projects with participation of Ukrainian artists and cultural professionals. Also, Lithuanian cultural and art institutions are open till now and will be open forever <laughs> for Ukrainian uh, uh, arts, uh, artists and cultural professionals and most of their services are accessible free of charge. So they also implement education projects for Ukrainian children and youth and very, various initiatives to support Ukraine are also organized. Also, joint initiatives between Lithuanian and Ukrainian artists are being implemented internationally 
internationally i could uh, i would like to point out that our culture attaches in lithuanian embassies all over the world actively involved and uh, the projects uh, included like film screenings exhibitions concerts workshops uh, discussions and the publication of articles articles by lithuanian intellectuals expressing support for the ukraine people and i would like to point uh, out one most remarkable project helped by lithuania by the way a tour of the national chamber orchestra of ukraine kiev solis in sweden and norway and for example this tour and this uh, this uh, concert raised uh, about 8 million euros for the Ukraine support. So a lot of, uh, we have a lot of initiatives and our culture ministry also take, uh, pay a lot of attention and we will always support and we are happy to, to, to make such, to make, uh, implement such good initiatives. So, so it's very important for us. Thank you, Diana. Mrs. Grigorenko, I would like to ask you to, uh, to give a few comments on the question about the change between the relation of cultural spaces of Lithuania and Ukraine during the last months. Well, thank you for the question. I should say that uh, relationships uh, between Lithuanian and uh, Ukrainian cultural sphere um, intensity and dynamics has grown tremendously. From the very first days of the full-scale invasion, uh, we had most sincere and heartful support from uh, Lithuanian Ministry of Culture and Lithuanian cultural institutions. Uh, first days, we have asked for the support and accommodation for the people who fled from Ukraine, especially students from the music academies and uh, professors and teaching staff from music academies, and we have uh, immediate reaction, positive reaction, uh, immediate. So that was really important for us at that moment. Uh, but I I, sh I, would like to come back a little bit, one step. Um, uh, in January, me and the minister were uh, visiting uh, Kaunas uh, at the integration event at the European Capital of Culture of, uh, 2022. Uh, and this meeting, uh, we have invited the uh, Lithuanian Minister of Culture to Ukraine uh, to sign the agreement uh, like Lublin Triangle between Poland, Lithuania and Ukraine. Uh, and this meeting should have been uh, happened on 25th of February. Of course, it didn't happen, but anyway, that didn't... Um, uh, have an obstacle to sign this agreement virtually. And um, I think this demonstrates that um, support of Lithuania to Ukraine is not just words, you know, it's actions, it's deeds and actions. We have seen a lot, tremendous amount of uh, cultural events, different partnerships, exhibition of uh, works of Pinzel, Baroque wooden sculpture, our Kharkiv uh, Theater of uh, Opera and Ballet have been accommodated for the residency for one month. It's a huge amount of people which were greeted in uh, Lithuania. They have been given more than 20 or 40 concerts um, on place. Uh, we know about uh, individual corporations, about institutional partnerships, but we understand that uh, this cooperation um uh, it's between friends it's not only partners you know we understand each other as many of the participants has already mentioned that we understand each other and no matter what the distance is between our countries we are on the same part in this world um so i should say that um nowadays we have um really close communication with the Minister of Culture between our ministries and um, uh, our ministers, uh, they are communicating like by phone. It's not official letter of um, exchanging. It's really informal. It's really fruitful. And I think that uh, that is an example of uh, really heartful cooperation and really heartful support, which is needed for Ukraine for sure. Uh, if we are going, um, if we are talking about um, 
longer term plans. Of course, um, yeah, interesting. And we are facing this interest from the Lithuanian side in long term partnership. Of course, this period is really uh, urgent and really um, an unusual situation for all of us. But we are interested in establishing mutually beneficial relationships, not only receiving Ukrainians and giving them platforms in Lithuania, but establishing this relation and getting known better each other in Ukraine as well. So for us, it's uh, really important. And unfortunately, at the moment, we don't have much financial capacity and much operational capacity within Ukraine. But anyway, we are inviting and we are waiting uh, Lithuanian artists, composers, uh, cultural activists to make some uh, artistic projects in Ukraine. It's really important to show to the whole world that Ukraine uh, has not stopped in its cultural and artistic activity. We are continue to live on, we continue to fight, we are continue to create, and we are not living in bomb shelters. We continue to live our normal life. Of course, the situation it's not usual, but we are continue to create and cultural uh, sphere is of much importance for all of us. So I think um, that your uh, event is uh, one of the examples of this mutually beneficial cooperation. And I truly believe that uh, this is only the first step and it will have its uh, development not only this year, but in future Thank you very much, Mrs. Grigorenko. Daina, uh, Mrs. Galina Grigorenko mentioned long-term initiatives, uh, mutually based. Uh, you mentioned before many initiatives that has been done during the last months, but um, uh, is there a plan, for example, to have some long-term mutual cooperation initiatives from the part of the Minister of Culture? Yes, um, we now we are uh, we are launching uh, the new pro program of the uh, cultural sorry uh, it's creative Europe program, and today I talked with uh, international department uh, what our plans. So they mentioned that uh, now we are making new guidelines, and uh, in these guidelines we will offer a flexible system to provide grants most to project aiming, uh, for, for example, supporting Ukrainian artists and cultural organizations to create and showcase their art and works in Ukraine and Europe for the several years. Another, uh, another uh, aiming will be for several years helping Ukraine displaced people in Ukraine and or Creative Europe participating countries. So, all institutions will have access uh, access uh, to the cultural projects, to the to the joint initiatives, and uh, another aim will be about how prepare the post-war recovery for the Ukraine uh, cultural sectors through the very initiatives with the other countries who will join. For example, if uh, Lithuanian composer, composer union will will have would like to have a continued initiative they will be they will have the possibility to be in this program and to have partners from the ukraine from the other country from the baltic maybe countries so we put our main effort to to make this creative europe program more flexible more more visible and more more strengthen this uh, our relation with ukraine artists so the the main plan mm -hmm. this 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 cultural program thank you uh, mrs grigorenko i would also uh, like to point out that uh, mentioned uh, recovery period uh, in the afterwar period uh, actually what is the help that col uh, ukrainian cultural sector needs most and the help where international partners could contribute most and you actually um, we are of course planning recovery of ukraine after the victory but we are still living on in in the war time so we have uh, separate directions where the uh, necessary support uh, 
is uh, really needed. Uh, first of all, uh, we are preparing for the winter, and that means that uh, on many territories where the Russian uh, targets, uh, specifically the critical infrastructure, for example, heating or ele electric networks, our cultural institutions could uh, could found themselves could could uh, be without uh, heating or without uh, electricity, and that means danger and threat to museum collection, to libraries and of course to musical instruments in our theaters, philharmonies, uh, musical schools, artistic educations. Uh, and uh, we are asking our European partners about support and kind contribution in form of equipment for these urgent um, needs, like for example, uh, electric generators, fireproof fabrics, fire extinguishers, etc., etc., to survive the winter. Because we understand that we cannot evacuate everything from the front line, from the eastern part to, of Ukraine to the more safest uh, part uh, to the west of the country. So these institutions should survive the winter. And the uh, second part is um, conservation works for the damaged buildings, which are on the eastern part, on the front lines, so there's eight uh, regions of Ukraine, north, uh, east and southern part of Ukraine, where these buildings are now staying without windows or with broken roofs. And if we will leave them in this condition uh, during the winter, we will have much more trouble to rebuild them after uh, the victory. So we need to do some conservation works and we are closely um, connected in this uh, direction with UNESCO Heritage Protection Fund and Leave fund and of course we are applying for any help from our partners international communities to help us um, either financially either in uh, kind contribution for make for making this uh, conservation works to protect these buildings and of course the third direction is uh, support in form of grants or stipends or any financial contribution for our artists because 80% of people are still living in Ukraine. They are here and they need to work here. They need to create cultural products. Cultural institutions, unfortunately, are now experiencing a huge deficit in their revenues because they are working on diminished operational capacity. Because, for example, if even the opera theater has uh, 1,300 places, they can sell only 300 tickets because their bomb shelters can accommodate only 300 people. So uh, our cultural institutions have um, reduced revenues and uh, support from the local or state uh, authorities are also really tightened. So these institutions to survive, uh, they need more resources because they cannot uh, fulfill their obligations to pay utilities in full, to pay wages in full. And that means that they will face uh, the need of uh, fire, firing their people. So in creative industries, for example, we have uh, at the moment 40% unemployment rate. In cultural sphere, which is uh, mostly supported from the state or local budget, it's a little bit better situation, but anyway, we are facing a lot of trouble keeping these people in the sphere, because if we will allow them to move to other sectors of economy, to, uh, to become other professionals. So we, we will gather, we will have uh, a lot of problems gathering them, them back. And of course, uh, people who are now abroad and uh, working as our cultural ambassadors, of course, we are waiting them back. And to, to have them back, we need to provide them resources and platforms and uh, some stimulus to get uh, back in Ukraine to have their work, to have a uh, possibility to create some new cultural products, to continue their cultural expression, because we understand that, uh, first of all, is uh, security, but second question is, how can I work, how can I survive in Ukraine? So these three spheres are the most important and the most urgent needs for us. Uh, I'm not talking about the um, great rebuilding which will start after the victory because that is a much more bigger question. Of course, we are planning and we are working on this plan, but I think 
the most important thing is to keep people in the cultural sphere, to give them resources and possibility to stay in the cultural sphere and to work here. Thank you very much, uh, Mrs. Galina Grigorenko. And now I would like to speak about maybe more specific initiatives that could be launched to form a sustainable relation, cultural relation between Lithuania and Ukraine. Because yes, now uh, we have been discussing about a lot of different initiatives, festivals, corporations, grants, etc. But it is very important, we all know, and I think it's one of the aims of this discussion, to uh, think about this post-war period, which hopefully comes as soon as possible, and how can we strengthen the relation between Lithuania and Ukraine, between our cultural sectors after that, and mutually, yes, because we are very happy to have Ukrainian artists here to represent their art, but I believe that we will be happy to meet them in Ukraine and to represent Lithuanian art there too. So uh, maybe, I don't know, Katerina, let's start with you. How would you uh, visualize uh, this possibility of initiatives that actually could be done. Uh, Albert, I believe he mentioned a few um, uh, propositions, but please give your give your point of view. Mm, so yeah, thank you. I think that the first possibility it's where actually uh, kind of we now here <laughs> in panel discussions. It was an idea to to bring all all us together and to. Uh, it, you know, it's a good thing that with uh, Lithuanian partner, we do not need to say start cooperation or start uh, our discussion. We already in the middle. We now go deeper and and think how to do that in the best way. And uh, I think that what we learn also is how to be flexible. And uh, again, unfortunately, we have this uh, uh, this course. Uh, you know, speed up course of uh, how how to cooperate to each other and how to do it very uh, you know, very you know precisely because we do not have time uh, to to learn. <laughs> we need to do that immediately right now, uh, and uh, yeah, and I think that. The more we project, we have joint projects. The more we can learn how to do that. And as Marta said, we have so many things in common. We have already started uh, work in several projects, and now it doesn't matter what will be. Uh, I don't know uh, in which. Uh, yeah, how to say? Uh, it doesn't matter. Will we be connected? To, you know, in this project or other project, we will continue uh, cooperate. Uh, so I think that this people-to-people uh, -people communication and uh, this, mm, which builds the biggest organization, I think it can help us to uh, to let's say not build the uh, basis, but the next level of the basis. At, uh, for sure. Anna, I would uh, like to ask you, as you are, I would say, an example of a sustainable relation between Lithuania and Ukraine, as I know that you are a friend with some Lithuanian composers for some time. It's not like... Uh, this is, uh, of course, uh, it's very interesting. Uh, when the Katerina started to talk, uh, I start to think each uh, generation have uh, some uh, absolutely different idea about sustainability, about uh, perspective. For example, uh, Katerina represents a non-profit organization, Kirib Contemporary Music Day. It's a very dynamic little group uh, of people to organize concerts, mostly concert of European music, um, not Ukrainian, but European. It's like education, an education pro project in Kyiv. It's very actual, it's very important. But for example, I work in Kiev Music Academy. I'm a member of uh, Union of Composers. Also, I'm the president of Electroacoustic Music uh, Associ Associ Association of Ukraine. And uh, so uh, my experience, for example, it's uh, I think it's about Oswald S. Balakauskas, mm -hmm. uh, because he work, uh, he studied in Kiev Conservatory in Vizgatushinsky with uh, contemporary composers like Silvestrov, uh, Lenin Grabowski, it's this generation. 
Of course, uh, so it's uh, for my generation, uh, we, I, I can uh, uh, to think about uh, experience to uh, recreate new perspective of uh, music after decolonization. Because Lithuania, uh, Lithuanian composer, uh, make a uh, uh, little bit the same experience like our um, so independent uh, in line. Uh, so in this period of decolonization, uh, for, for us, it's more uh, dramatic, more uh, traumatic. For example, I work in conservatory. It's name of conservatory Tchaikovsky. Now, for me, it's my personal <laughs> drama, <laughs> tragedy. <laughs> But for uh, a lot of uh, professor of Kiev conservatory, it's okay to be a professor of uh, conservatory named Tchaikovsky in Kiev now, during Haven't the war. Have you thought uh, about changing the name? Because our theater just changed the name. Yes, <laughs> yesterday. Yes. Yes. yesterday. <laughs> it's it's very, very interesting uh, situation. Uh, so, uh, for, for example, for, for, for me, I, uh, my experience is very, very different with the uh, professor, some professor <laughs> of Kiev Conservatory. So, um, yes, uh, my uh, relation with the uh, Lithuanian composer started uh, in the period uh, of uh, early, early independence. So it was like uh, 30 years ago. And uh, now I continue to work uh, with Sharon Asnaka's uh, comp composer and group, uh, acoustic uh, group of Sharon Asnaka's. And uh, uh, next, uh, uh, this week uh, it was also some uh, sessions, three sessions of Sharon Asnaka's uh, dedicated to anniversary of Sharon's. So uh, uh, this it means for me uh, this personal um, relation, uh, personal activity. And, uh, what I think about institution, for example, my National Key Music Academy, <laughs> I'm not sure about uh, big uh, intensive um, cooperation. But uh, our professor, like uh, Irina Tukova, Alexander Zharkov, participated in many, many uh, international uh, conference, conference in Vilnius Academy. So it's like uh, personal, also personal activity of uh, musicologist or ethnomusicologist because you, we have absolutely fantastic, uh, big, big, big uh, um, uh, relation with ethnomusicology uh, of Lithuania. It's experience absolutely fantastic and uh, very, very uh, effective. So with many. Um, expedition, um, international expedition uh, in the region of Polisia or Lithuania, Dzukia. So uh, I think now it's no new period uh, with uh, non-profit organization, uh, young composer, young people with absolutely new uh, perspective. So it's, I think it's it's good idea to collaborate between the institution and artists of different, different, different level. But Ala, could mm. I continue asking as I wanted to continue with the question about the possible maybe uh, exchanging between in, on an education level, the question for you and for Mantutas as representatives of uh, academies of music, but why you actually say that the possibility of cooperation between, for example, Kiev Academy and Lithuania is not so very much possible? Yeah, I think it's possible with... Uh, for example, very uh, very quick and effective initiative like Erasmus uh, program, for example. But it's we need to to to, to start. It's not uh, with uh, our administration. <laughs> it's 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 also we need some absolutely personal interest. Uh, I know, for example, uh, that. Uh, uh, Kiev uh, uh, Glier uh, institution. We have a second also second academy in Kiev, uh, like university. So first it's our music academy Tchaikovsky, but second uh, like also high level university music university. It's uh, Glier institution, and this uh, I know that institute uh, Glier uh, Gl the Glier institute collaborate with electronic studio in Vilnius, for example and uh, use uh, ambisonic uh, <laughs> windows uh, studio so it's like uh, personal uh, exchange personal uh, research it's very effective it's better it's uh, like it's just absolutely fantastic all, all little project like uh, erasmus project but 
not uh, with big big institution, but uh, like uh, one uh, professor, second professor. It's m mobile. It's it's better to 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 be some more more mobile, more dynamic, uh, effective. I think. Maybe now I would like to go back to Mantutas if he is with us. Uh, Mantutas, can you hear me? Yes. I'd like to come back with the question about this possibility of exchange or some kind of str a stronger relation maybe between the institutions. Ala mentioned that personal initiatives are much more effective and much more possible. What would be your point of view? Do you see that maybe in the post-war period, starting from now, for example, uh, some kind of a st uh, stronger relation between the academies, I don't know, could, could be formed uh, during via exchange or some kind of other initiatives? Yes, definitely. Uh, to my understanding, these opportunities, which are partly available already now, like Erasmus or Creative Europe, maybe another uh, European programs, for example, um, they will only grow and become more available for the cooperation of uh, or to concrete countries. Uh, because it's just a tool for people to get in this uh, direct contact and uh, share what they want to share it always comes down to individuals of course to those who own this cooperation on one or another sphere and i think this is um, this matter of internationalization in the uh, european context might be something uh, which we would uh, be very glad to share also like from uh, administration or coordination perspective uh, as we went through all of that you know the, the availability of, of European tools for applications for international uh, educational uh, artistic and other programs um, I think uh, we would be very excited to see more and more possibilities to include our Ukrainian partners and I'm pretty sure that on the institutional um, well, let's say political or managerial level, there would be definitely support uh, for this from both of our countries and uh, like uh, rector's offices on of our main uh, main institutions. Yeah, and I think we're we're looking uh, forward to that uh, definitely. But in the end, of course, uh, it is very important this uh, personal uh, connection and the things which can people creates together you know, to my understanding the uh, internationalization international environment as well as interdisciplinary uh, things are very important for nowadays let's say developments in in arts and research it, it just enhances the uh, local culture as well as uh, strengthens uh, persons as artists so I think it has to be encouraged and I'm personally as well as institutionally looking forward uh, to cooperating within the frameworks of such programs, uh, be it uh, under the support of European either bilateral uh, country initiatives. You are waiting for a possibility to go to Ukraine, to the Kiev Academy with the composer, uh, composers, <laughs> uh, students of composition and to share the experience with them, hopefully. It could happen. Of course, of course. And, uh, we're always open and welcome, welcoming anybody as well here in Vilnius and our studio and Music Innovation Studies Center. Thank you, Mantutas. Ostap, are you with us? Yes, yes. So now I would like to give a question for you, as you are not only a composer, but also co-founder of uh, festivals. Uh, how would you see the possibility, I don't know, for the mutual cooperation, uh, stronger mutual cooperation? Maybe you can give a few examples or a few uh, offers how actually Ukraine and Lithuania could exchange uh, there are their culture more effectively, not only now, but uh, also in a long-term period. 
thank you. Thank you for the question. Uh, so um, I think that the very important is uh, what uh, Professor Krukowski has mentioned before. It's uh, the different level of uh, cooperation. And I think that it's very important that uh, at the moment we are completely ready to start the cooperation on the individual level. And I think it's most important uh, the starting of the cooperation from the individual level, because if we look from the above, you know, uh, usually if the, um, any initiative starts from the, let's say, from the level of the ministries and they, you know, put the uh, directives to the university, so let's start the cooperation, usually it uh, have no perspective. But if the cooperation started from the low level, uh, there are the very good opportunity, but uh, then we uh, uh, need to like clearly understand that we should have these three levels like uh, the basic levels of individuals uh, and interconnection between uh, individual practices and collaboration uh, on the individual level then uh, the very important level it's a level of ngo or our small initiative or like cooperation in terms of university it might be also cooperation between different departments like the straight cooperation between, for example, the Department of Composition of uh, Lviv Music Academy and Vilnius Music Academy, and that's it. And, uh, and then uh, we should have this higher level uh, because also uh, the very important is, uh, of course, is funding of, of such initiative. So in the past, um, uh, we have fantastic example of co collaboration with uh, Tromsø University in Norway. And it was exactly this like three level uh, cooperation. So we have individual cooperation, we have cooperation based on NGO association, and then we have support from the uh, rectorate of uh, of uh, both uh, music academy, uh, Lviv Music Academy, and and, and Tromsø University, and uh, then we also uh, became the part of uh, a grant program of Norwegian Ministry of Culture, and thanks to that, uh, this co collaboration were very beneficial, and thanks to that, we built it in 2014. Uh, we created a studio for electro acoustic music in uh, uh, our uh, our music academy, um, and uh, also uh, many many years ago we started collaboration with Krakow uh, Studio of electro acoustic music. Uh, um, we have very deep collaboration with uh, Audio Art Festival in. Uh, in Krakow, and um, uh, recently we also started uh, our initiatives with uh, uh, two festivals. One festival is Vox Electronica Festival. It's a festival which we, as NGO NURT, uh, with collaboration of uh, Lviv Music Academy, uh, provided uh, and focused mainly on uh, educational activities. So the uh, different uh, courses workshops are essential part of uh, of the festival and then we also have the other festival is festival of audio visual art tetramatica uh, and i think it's a very good example uh, because we started also the festival in 2015 from very small festival where we invited our friends and we started from individual level then we received support from uh, Lviv uh, Department of Culture, so it's Department of Culture or Lviv City uh, City Council. Uh, so we started receiving some financial support. Then we started receiving support from uh, different institutions of cultural diplomacy, like Goethe Institute, Polish Institute, French Institute, uh, and uh, and so on. Uh, started collaboration with Adam Mickiewicz Institute in, in Poland, and from the 2013 uh, till uh, uh, now, uh, so the festival happened every two year, and we see how uh, this initiative, which started from uh, completely like individual initiative, called to the friends, so uh, hey, uh, please visit Lviv and present your projects. Uh, and it started from completely like volunteer initiative and it's grow to a really big festival when we uh, could have a 
collaboration with uh, huge and important institutions and also on the level of, uh, of the ministry and also I think it, what is very important in Ukraine, something which changed a few years ago, it's an um, initiative with uh, Ukrainian Cultural Foundation. So for many years, uh, Ministry of Culture uh, was uh, completely uh, responsible for um, uh, decision about funding uh, projects. Yes, so which project could uh, receive funding, which couldn't receive funding. And uh, of course, if all processes are uh, closed on the one uh, institution, it uh, might be not so uh, effective for the using of, uh, of uh, finances and using of all the initiative. A few years ago, Ukrainian Cultural Foundation started and uh, um, they invite uh, um, uh, experts from all of Ukraine, all uh, in different um, uh, uh, with different expertise, like different musicians, uh, theater performers, visual artists, and uh, they have uh, like the process of choosing which product uh, could receive uh, finance uh, funds for uh, evaluation, and uh, I think since that. Uh, a lot, a lot of change in the sphere of, of Ukrainian art. So then a lot of this small initiative, which uh, started on uh, like interpersonal level, um, since the initiation of Ukrainian Cultural Foundation, they received the possibility to have really good funds for realization of, of their projects. And uh, I think it opened uh, like the doors for many uh, young people and for many initiatives for starting collaboration. And I think it's, uh, uh, I hope that this initiative will not stop uh, after the war, will continue. And I think it's the most important uh, what we have now. So now we have um, uh, a good will to collaborate. We have, uh, uh, quite uh, a long experience of collaboration in a different uh, Ukrainian NGO, in different Ukrainian artistic societies, um, but also we have mechanized uh, uh, not only on the uh, like le uh, not only on the level of uh, uh, institutions, but also on the level of uh, of Ministry of Culture and the Ukrainian Cultural Foundation. And I think that uh, so now uh, the Ukrainian cultural society is completely ready for such kind of collaboration. Because if we look at the past, as uh, Alza Hakevich mentioned, I'm not sure that uh, uh, many professors from, uh, from uh, Tchaikovsky Music Academy uh, uh, were ready for any uh, international collaboration. And uh, I think it was a huge problem and at the moment it changed because we have much more actors on the sphere of uh, uh, cultural activity. Yeah. Thank, you, Thank you, Ostap. And now coming back to uh, representatives of Lithuanian organizations and talking about the possible initiatives that could be uh, long-lasted, maybe, Marta. Uh, for which possibilities would synesthesis be open for which initiatives that uh, would last longer than, I don't know, a few, few programs, few months, uh, you would be open, for example? Well, we already uh, talked with uh, Katerina and Kev Contemporary Music Days what we could do with further collaboration and maybe also involve mo more countries and exactly what Albert mentioned, maybe to do projects that would allow us to maybe share common uh, pasts and maybe rethink of how we want to speak with each other because as I said, it seems that we all want to direct our attention to not to each other but somewhere else. So this is maybe one of the things, but I just wanted to say that uh, I was thought long now everybody say, and I completely agree that these small initiatives, they're very important and we are thinking about them and I think it will be very important for us in this level of, but I just wanted to say that very often and what we spoke very much in a, in a conversation that we had with Snestis and Kev Contemporary Music 
uh, days it's about this idea of canon and I think that we are talking now about small organizations and what I always miss is pressure to big organizations that if we won't ever poke a little bit why they're still repeating uh, this imperialistic narratives one after another and I'm not just speaking about Russian but about all the big uh, concert halls and so on and so forth and if initiatives are left only for very often non-governmental level it means that it's on very like it's huge work pressures for you know alternative but the main who has most uh, resources human resources is super important but because now we speak with Katerina very often all these things that are very important and so on and so forth very often works on few people who are working million hours a day and I think that this is very important topic that we can't just be super active and really well-meaning and live and what you speak I think with Tchaikovsky Conservatory it's a little bit of that if there is no pressure to these uh, these uh, levels that okay we love Tchaikovsky for, and we're not even speaking why there could be a some kind of wish for recontextualization of why why there could be questions or why concert halls still include only this without any that's why we don't know anything that's why we don't know any I don't know Scandinavian or whatever that's I think for me it's always elephant in the room because all the non-governmental organizations were doing fantastic work but I think the scale is still such as it's not the you know it's it it shakes as much as it can but I think just there should be institutional pressure and very I don't know maybe that's a beautiful thing that minister <laughs> is here to maybe there could be some tools I'm not speaking about something radical that changed the thing but at least discussions or some way because I think if you if we won't touch this area because it has the resources the main ones then I think the change will be very slow and yes it will be very personal maybe uh, we can do beautiful new things, new creations, but if give, I don't know, orchestra for uh, Ukrainian uh, composers to work with, that would be such a huge effect in such a big level, you know. And I think this is important topic also to speak sometimes, because also this festival uh, is a proof that it's very uh, beautiful effect on few people's work and very nice thinks what's gonna happen but what could be done if you give you know huge all the, resources. all the resources for me it's always very like painful thing because sometimes the beautiful ideas doesn't receive platform and that's where the something Change doesn't happens. yeah something doesn't line up for me so i think this is also important sometimes to see Thank you, Marta, for this very important uh, matter to cover. It's really, I think, as, as you said, elephant in the room. Mm -hmm. uh, Diana mentioned these initiatives of uh, Kiev soloist concerts, which were actually these huge initiatives. Uh, but hopefully this could be long-lasting and not like a one-time thing. Mikola, so about the openness and the possibility of Lithuanian Composers Union, which is not the biggest organization, but... <laughs> I actually enjoy very much that model of like this personal level, then NGO bigger organizations and then that strategic level or or maybe like it's sometimes difficult to theorize where there are budget organizations but this model actually it's very good and actually we discussed it a lot actually in, in our with our staff and uh, perhaps uh, it's not a. It's a very obvious thing that probably if these all three levels will work, we will get the result. And what the result we would like to get? So probably uh, we, as having this history of uh, getting further apart from uh, Soviet Russia and going completely to the, that European dimension, we probably feel that the direction is towards uh, integration of U Ukraine into European Union's uh, cultural world. And uh, if talking about uh, these uh, NGO levels and uh, the smaller organizations, I think uh, 
reality is very important and it's very important as colleagues noted that um, uh, there, there are some uh, generation things there are some a lot of people when gathered together they are thinking how to the goals can vary actually so I think uh, it's very important for such organization as ours to use that tools what we are using so I think uh, mutual creation, uh, giving a platform, for example, in the residencies format uh, for uh, creators from Ukraine and Lithuania and other countries to create something together. Another sort of possibility I think is uh, very important, some sort of networking uh, projects or platforms where people gather in conferences or meetings and discuss what how to implement this goal in specific way and uh, is it some exchange between festivals? Is it cooperation uh, between some ensembles in some countries? Maybe joint festival. Maybe even joint festival. Yes, there are variety, but uh, it's very important to agree on common topic and for, uh, for that reason it's very important and middle range organizations can do that and can I don't know, organize some sort of networks like Lithuania, Ukraine, and maybe uh, including some in other countries, maybe in that case, uh, Ukraine, Lithuania. And uh, that can help actually to then find and to get to the practical tasks to participate in some project applications, to uh, also extend the network of, of the uh, possible cooperators, uh, so, so, but that's very important to understand that yes, of course, I totally agree that uh, personal level is very important because it's very sincere and it has uh, much less these managerial situations and, and problems. Uh, and of course, the strategic level, it's, it's, it's not also, it's very important because uh, uh, what what uh, also Lithuanian government is doing, I think it's it's crucial An example also for other countries. What other countries can do in, in that situation? So, so if we will do everything in one direction and in all level, I think yes, the most uh, biggest goals can be reached. Thank you, Mikolas. And as we do not have very much time left. Uh, firstly, I would like to ask maybe some of the speakers would like to uh, add a comment or uh, tell something that hasn't been said but should be said in the context of this discussion. So feel free to do that. If there is no more comments, I would like to conclude with this beautiful idea that Mikolas mentioned about the closeness that we felt during last terrible months from one side but uh, months that can give us hope that uh, we will have a beautiful mutual relations long lasting relations and i believe that uh, at least a joint festival could happen <laughs> and maybe we could give this promise to everybody watching this discussion so i would like to uh, give a huge uh, thank to all who has been with us today uh, I would like to thank to all the speakers who gave their ideas, who shared their ideas and I will repeat again that I hope that uh, this mutual relation, this mutual cooperation will get stronger and stronger. Thank you very much and have a beautiful evening. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks everyone. Have a good evening. <laughs> so now the blurred screen and we can go. <laughs>